of almost seven now, if you ask me what you can bring a new mom, I would automatically say breakfast, especially if she has other children. Mornings can be a little rough with a newborn and lack of sleep and having to get breakfast on the table. So definitely, and breakfast can be ate any time of day. What you saw is me put baked oatmeal muffins on the cooling rack and here I am starting to make broth. I'll drink that postpartum or make soup or use it when I make rice. And I always add uh, ginger, garlic, and apple cider to my broth to help it make extra nutrients and pull nutrients from the bones. And I'm adding random herbs and things in my broth and then I start it in my pressure cooker and I cook my broth for two hours and let it slow release before draining it out and adding salt to it before I put it in the fridge. Next up comes from a childhood favorite recipe, potato rolls, which I've tweaked the recipe over the years. And instead of using Crisco, I use coconut oil. Instead of instant mashed potatoes, I use regular potatoes, or in today's case, I am using sweet potatoes. So I didn't have all the free sweet potatoes I needed, so I needed to put them back in the pressure cooker. And then I'm mashing up the sweet potatoes, and I will making a double batch in my Bosch mixer. And this is probably the biggest recipe, and it really mixes way to the top. I can't even let that big batch rise in the mixer. Be a standard recipe makes about 30 rolls and any recipe I have today I'll make sure I put in the description box or a link to the recipe specifically and here I used I also to make it more nutrient dense postpartum I'm trying to really get good nutrients and not just eating for the sake of calories so I'm mixing uh, regular flour with some fresh ground spelt flour that you see me added and that's why you'll see my dough be a little bit darker and with six other kids I always have someone willing to help in the kitchen so here we are measuring out the sweet potatoes and getting that mixer <laughs> working and this potato recipe is kind of a two-day process I start it one day I let it rise in the fridge overnight and then I roll it out into balls and let it rise for the second time and then bake it. If not, it turns into literally an all day project. So I like to prep it, put it in the fridge and then finish it off the next day. And you'll see I'm putting it in this huge container cause I double batch this. So it's, it's gonna make like 70, <laughs> 70 rolls. Here's this hard because it was in the fridge but it gives me extra time to be able to roll these all out into balls and then give it a second rise. And I just keep dividing it and dividing it. Here they are, and now I'll just let these rise. You put them close together, and by the time they're done on the second rise, they'll kind of be like a pull-apart roll, like Hawaiian rolls or something. Here I'm just making some sourdough muffins to go along. I used the extra sweet potato and pumpkin pie seasonings and made these into sourdough pumpkin muffins. Some for fresh eating and some for the freezer. When I plan on making more so we can eat it or have snacks for the coming days because mama's big and pregnant. <laughs> And here, since she was such a big helper, I'm letting her do her own little project. And her and her big sister made homemade like Reese's peanut butter cups is basically what this is. Now, this is the broth. I use these containers because they're so, they hold about six cups, but I can put them in my stand-up freezer in the door and I can get a bunch of them in there. So I write with a dry erase on top if it's chicken or beef or vegetable. And then moving on, we are making a overnight French toast bake. Again, I like to use, to make my mornings easier, I do a nightly prep. And if I can make breakfast the night before and then just pop in the oven, it just makes it that much nicer. And we use like buttons um, of bread or 
you know, a half a loaf or something or mixed bread or I sometimes freeze bread in cubes and then I can get it out for this. But I put the butter, sugar, and then she wanted pecans on the bottom. Mix it with six eggs and two cups of milk and then the bread and pour it into a pan. Next up, I'm moving on to granola bars. So this is Ruth Ann Zimmerman's. If you're not familiar with her, I love her videos and her garden tours and she's a wealth of knowledge. But her granola bar recipe is amazing. And I made a big batch as to put in the freezer and we have still been making them almost weekly. No one has gotten tired of them. And they're way easier to do and press into my pan, my nine by 13 pan and simply cut versus making the energy balls that you have to shape into your hand and then store in the freezer. So this has been awesome and I can prep a bunch and put them in gallon freezer bags. So I'm melting the one cup of peanut butter, one cup of honey, and then mixing it with all the other ingredients. And I have changed out the nuts. I have changed out chocolate chips for cranberries. Um, even the Rice Krispie cereal, I ran out of that and I used Raisin Bran that I like crumpled up and it worked amazing too. So it's very forgiving and once you make it a couple times, it's easy to switch ingredients out based on what you have in your kitchen versus buying other stuff. Uh, I'll definitely link that in the description and it is a great, it's going to be a great summer um, snack to keep on hand because I just keep them in the freezer or in the fridge and cut them up after they sit in the fridge for a little bit and then I just cut that parchment paper and I just put them in the gallon bags labeled and super easy to pull out and here I didn't get a whole lot of video but this was simply sourdough discard I cooked in my pan as like a pancake it's simply sourdough and then I made some scrambled eggs with ham and cheese and I made those little tacos froze them threw them in a gallon bag for my late night snacks for after the baby was born and it was pretty amazing here I didn't show the pro whole process of this either but from making almond milk I actually saved the almond pulp and decided I was going to try to do uh, freeze dry the pulp to use in cookies or other baking and although I haven't actually made anything out of it I do have a couple half gallon jars um, that I vacuum sealed this little tool takes out the air and I double check the seal and I keep it like that and that is almond pulp that I can reuse instead of letting it go to waste because we do live within the city limits we are hoping to find a country home this year but um, I'm trying not to waste anything and I know certain things like that might go out to the animals, but it's not right now Next up I am making bagels. So I'm making a double batch here of Bagels so we can again you can use them for breakfast sandwiches. You can use them for a snack or what have you um, I have not perfected making bagels. These ones turned out flat and I don't know if I let them over rise before starting um, actually cooking them I think that's what I might have done wrong but it all tasted all right again I'm using dividing them up I think I made a double batch so I think I made about 32 and always homeschooling I have the most energy first thing in the morning so I was doing these projects in the morning and kids that needed help with school were coming into the kitchen to help me some everything bagel a lot of them were just plain so we could do cream cheese or sandwiches or whatever here I'm making a fun treat that I saw on someone else's video about like a homemade ice cream but using um, heavy cream and whipping that up and then some cooled down homemade jam and mixing it together a whipped ice cream almost and it was delicious but it's kind of something you want to eat like the same day because it got really hard in the freezer to cut up. So it's kind of like make in the morning, plan on eating it that day. Um, and then next up, I am getting a batch of our lentil soup we like. I had made on a different day some naan bread or we like to eat it with crackers or over rice, but it's a quick lunch I can do. But I thought it would be nice to just have it prepped in a jar because it's one less thing this mama has to do. I just dump it in with some lemon juice and some broth or water 
and then cook it in the instant pot for like literally like four minutes and honestly I love the jar looking like this if you ever when you were a kid and went to the fair and had those sand little bottles of sand you could layer that's what this reminded me of us and it cracked me up because when my husband came home he's like you did that on purpose right so again always a little helper Thank you.